Hi friends, my name is Ajay Gulati and uh, this short video is about sharing some knowledge that uh, I have gained over the years uh, you know, after using, selling and promoting artificial turf as a solution for outdoor sports. The first thing you know, that comes to anybody's mind that uh, what exactly is artificial turf? Uh, what exactly is it as a product? Now artificial turf is, uh, as the name suggests, it's, an it's a synthetic man-made fiber of turf. Uh, of grass, if that's a more common term for it, uh, and it can be used for a variety of sports, but uh, primarily it is used for football. So the next question that will come to your mind is, uh, what exactly is artificial turf made of? Now, artificial turf has quite a, quite a bit of history. Uh, it started in the in the USA. Uh, it was manufactured by a company named uh, Monsanto, if I remember it right. Uh, the earlier generation artificial turfs were made of nylon. Uh, they were used for replacing American football fields, uh, which is rugby for us in India. Uh, then the second generation or the better version of artificial turf, turf came out, which was made of uh, polypropylene. Uh, the turf that is more prevalent nowadays, or which is more uh, common nowadays, or the one that you see in the, in the market nowadays, is polyethylene, which is a third generation artificial turf. It is made of these, uh, it is basically these plastic fibers, if, if I was to put it in a very rudimentary way, in a very basic way. As a user, again, I guess the next question you have is, why should I opt for artificial turf for one of my sports, right? If I'm playing on natural grass, why should I look at artificial turf? I think uh, from, from, some, uh, from the perspective of somebody who wants to play continuously on a, on a sports field, on a sports surface, the biggest, the biggest factor that works in the favor of artificial turf is the level of care. If you play a game of football on natural turf, uh, I, guess, I guess you will agree with the fact that the field nearly falls apart after one hard game of football. Now that is something that doesn't happen on artificial turf. You can play on it day in, day out, for months, for years, uh, with a very limited amount of care and your field is good to go anytime. You don't have to redo it, you don't have to use gardeners to fix the field, you don't have to use water to, to keep your field you know, in, in operational shape. So that is where artificial turf uh, comes into the picture in a big way. Uh, friends, we were discussing the reasons for adopting artificial turf over natural turf. Uh, there are multiple reasons which vary from geography, you know, on the basis of geography, country to country, or rather, uh, I think most importantly, the usage of the place. Uh, as I said earlier in the video, the maintenance is one very important factor. You don't have to maintain artificial turf uh, in as significant a way as you would need to do in case of natural turf. I think the other uh, factor which has become very relevant, uh, and I'm, I'm giving you the example of a city like Delhi, uh, where we would have done nearly, uh, let's say, 50 projects and nearly 30 or 25 out of them would be fields as big as 40,000, 50,000, 60,000 square feet. The biggest reason for the adoption of uh, you know this solution for outdoor games in the NCR region has been the paucity of water. Uh, sadly, you know we're running out of water everywhere in the country. Uh, in Delhi, as per regulations, you cannot draw water from the ground to to water your uh, natural fields. So you cannot just dig a borewell and start you know start drawing unlimited amounts of water to uh, to keep your natural field in shape, which is which is unavoidable, right? Uh, but then with artificial turf, you don't have to worry about water. Once it is done, there is absolutely zero amount of water required to maintain the field. So it leads to a whole lot of saving of uh, a resource that we are you know, running out of uh, in a big way. Uh, I, I, the, the other important aspect and it is connected to the first part that we discussed which is maintenance. Now let's say I am the I am planning to set up a small futsal arena, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000 square feet, five aside, six aside facility. Uh, my idea is to use that facility as a training facility, and also at the end of the day, I want to make money out of it, right? I want to use it as a commercial facility. I cannot do that with natural turf. I cannot uh, use my natural turf facility for seven or eight hours on a daily basis. I cannot use that even for three hours or four hours on a daily basis. It will get damaged. It needs time to recover. Once you played a game on it and so much natural turf has come out because of the kicking and running on it, it will take time to grow back. Now I cannot play on Monday and wait for the next session to, walk to be organized 15 days later, right? I want to do it every day. 
and that's where artificial turf becomes a really really important or i would say affordable solution because the amount of play time that i would be allowed because of it will eventually recover the costs that go in the first place you know in, in setting up that facility artificial turf is mostly installed on bases which are porous uh, we call them we call, we call this system the subsoil drainage system uh, wherein we dig up the ground we lay a network of pipes at the bottom uh, then we fill it fill it up with a you know different sizes of aggregate 20 mm stones 10 mm stones 30 mm stones uh, we compact it and roll it at every stage so that we the you know the aggregate is not so tight that the water doesn't go into the ground and it should not be so loose that when you're running on it or when the first rains come your entire base collapses so just to make it simple we don't necessarily need to do a concrete base to to make an artificial turf football facility we call it a subsoil drainage base and then we lay the turf on top of it it's cheaper to do it that way in comparison to concrete uh, it's a softer uh, base uh, you know to play on and uh, more importantly you know the water is going inside the ground so when it rains so this is this is your turf on top this is the base underneath all the entire turf would have these tiny holes at a few at every few inches the water goes through those holes goes all the way to the bottom of the base where the pipes are so you can see and you can drain the water further out so you can create a rain water harvesting facility as well and it's like ecologically it's more it's better you know the water is going back into the ground the water is not getting wasted right friends i have given you a brief about what artificial turf is uh, i hope it's been helpful uh, i would also like to take this moment uh, for you to know as to how we galaxy sports and infra private limited is uh, you know different from what a whole lot of other people are doing in the market now if if i was a layman you know let's assume i am a football enthusiast or an outdoor games enthusiast and i want to set up a facility for my school for myself or you know we're a bunch of friends coming together to set up a small arena uh i would of course i would call a whole lot of people up right i want to do i want to do my comparisons so that i'm getting bang for my buck so that i'm sure that whoever is it that i'm awarding this work to has the credentials has the experience and has the product to do my job right now i'm sure everybody uh, that you will call up uh, will tell you that they are the best company to do this they done the maximum amount of work their products are the are the most superior you know in comparison to what others have i would uh, i would go a little beyond these you know tall claims i would insist on the i, I would ask for the specifications of the product i would want to go a bit technical on this entire discussion i would want them to share the specifications of how would they go about doing you know how would they go about making the base I would ask them for the specifications of the turf they are planning to put. So, for instance, you know, if, if let's say there are two products for football, there's a 40 mm product and there's a 50 mm product. Now, conventional wisdom would suggest, right, that 50 mm product is obviously more expensive than a 40 mm product because it's a higher pile height. When I say 50 mm, when I say 50 mm, I'm just referring to the height of, let's say, one single strand of turf, right? Now uh, that can be slightly misleading in the sense uh, the density of the turf is also very important. I can now I can give you a 40 mm product which is more expensive than a 50 mm product because I the quality of materials used is better. The density of the materials used is higher in comparison to the 50 mm product, right? Or the quality of the backing that is there in my 40 mm product is better than the 50 mm product. So there are like eight ten parameters one has to look at. one has to you know do their research on before you can actually arrive on concluding that this product is good enough for my needs now why am why i insist on asking for specifications especially for a futsal facility it's it's a very simple comparison let's say i am wanting to make a full football field which is let's say 70 75000 square feet you know something within that range you have 11 players on each side so that's 22 people 22 people mauling or using a field of nearly 75000 square feet now let's say we compare it with our uh, you know with the general size of a, a five side futsal facility that we built in india which is around 6 to 8000 square feet okay now the number of players has nearly halved that's like five people on each side but the field the field size has come to nearly 1/10 of what it would be in case of a full football field you know what i'm trying to say so the amount of abuse or the amount of pressure that is there on your field in case of a futsal field is much more than it would be in case of a full football field 
automatically you need a surface which is much more resilient for playing football i can do with the mid range product for a full field i necessarily need to have a top notch product for futsal if i want a trouble free facility for the next 4 5 years you know however long i'm planning to run it list of specifications that you need to keep in mind briefly uh, some of them briefly it would be let's say the weight of the carpet the amount of sand and rubber that is going into the field the the infills right the sand infill and the rubber infill now if i was a shady supplier i would want to put in a whole lot of sand and very little rubber because rubber is ob- rubber crumbs are obviously more expensive than sand right i want it to be i want to say money right but there has to be a there has to be an appropriate proportion of both the products okay there has to be a certain amount of sand there has to be a certain amount of rubber for your field to have the necessary cushioning when your kids when the, when the users playing on it would land upon the field eventually when they run in it's a contact sport there's a lot of diving you'll fall on your knees on your elbows if there is too less rubber those people will not want to come and play on your field again they'll probably go and play to the field you know a kilometer down the road where the playing experience is much better so there has to be a certain proportion of sand and rubber that the weight of the carpet has to be a certain amount the density of the product the thickness of the yarn how many micron you know thick it is there are 200 micron products there are 300 micron products there are 400 micron products thicker the yarn more is the abuse that it can handle more is the beating or running that it can handle use those specs use that sheet and invite you know rates or uh, quotations from all the people telling them this is the best telling them that this is the benchmark you're working on and you need them to quote for, you know you need them to quote for these specifications uh, as a company we have installed nearly 500 facilities in the last 3 3 and a half years spread across the country uh, we would have done let's say nearly 2 million square feet of installations and we'll be more than happy to share with you as many numbers that you require when you can speak to our existing clients uh, in terms of their experience uh, you know about our service about our products how they are faring a couple of years after using the facilities and uh, we just want to do the right job you know we, we want to ensure that uh, we, we do a good installation for you and then you can recommend recommend us to 10 more people who are probably wanting to build a facility like yours friends i hope this session has been informative for you uh, i am not claiming to know all that there is to know about this line of work we've been doing this work for quite some time and we'll be happy to share our experience with you uh, if if you have any questions any queries you can reach out to us on the email id given below i hope you can take some time out to visit our facebook page our website and there's a whole lot of information about us about the projects that we've done and uh, we'll be happy to assist you any further yeah thank you